welcome back to the workshop for another Rusty production. Today we're going to look at making a touch mark. So in a video you're about to see, uh, or you maybe have seen already, um, I had a bit of a problem uh, with one of the files that I was working on to make a knife. Uh, now what was interesting about that is I was going to be using, uh, I had two files that had been annealed and I was going to be using each of those for some hardened, uh, hardened metal projects. One of those being a knife and the other one being a touch mark. So now I've gone to use the smaller file to, for the knife and, and I'm annealing that again now. Uh, this one here is uh, what's left of the uh, project I had that was the knife. Now, so what I'm going to be doing is taking this, uh, chopping the end off it, um, uh, upsetting the metal a little bit and preparing this piece to actually use as a touch mark. So let's get this heated up and I'll get started. So I'm trying to upset it in the metal here, just give it a bit of a fat, fat middle. going to chop the end off this here with an angle grinder. Uh, it's going to make it easier to work with and um, I'm going to need an area to hit for the punch at the very end anyway, so uh, I might as well do that now. I literally just didn't hit the record button but just cut off that area there so um, you can see it's probably going to be very hot. There we go. You can see that we squared off that edge. Now we're going to make it more square than rectangle. So the idea is to get this end relatively square. We'll round out this back part here, so I'll heat that up now and we'll round that out and um, try and sort of round it out to about there where there's a bit of a hip. Take the edges off. So I've watched a bunch of videos on making a touch mark, uh, but the latest one would have been from Roy at Christian Centered Ironworks, and uh, I'll put a link uh, below to his video on making a touch mark. This is very much inspired by that, so the shape of this, making sure it's a little fatter in the middle so that you can actually hold it comfortably like a pencil, um, uh, is where I got the idea to really get this one done now. Um, off the back of some of these fail failures with the steel, and this particular steel, um, yeah, it's a bit touch and go as to see whether, how long this will last because I think it is a bit of rubbish steel, but um, uh, it is hardening steel. So the, the steel, it is tool steel, it will harden. Uh, I do not know what's in it, it's mystery steel. But I'll just go um, turn the grinder on and um, clean up the edge uh, of here so that we can, we've got a platform to start uh, cutting our design into. All right, so you can see there, uh, it's, it's a rough uh, square shape. It is it's certainly not square um, in a legitimate sense, uh, but that's 
I've cleaned up that space because that's the area we're going to be cutting into. So uh, also to give it a bit of a chafer on the on the back, uh, just to make it so that when you punch uh, the punch on this end, that it doesn't spread as easily. So, um, or at least that's the idea. <laughs> we'll see how it all works out in practice. Um, so the next thing is I've got to flip my design. Basically it's an R or the R from the Rusty Pearson stuff. So um, uh, I'll get that all made up and then we'll start applying it to this. So the process I'm gonna be using to engrave onto here is basically reducing metal. So uh, using the, the same thing as, as what Roy did at um, Christ Centered Ironworks is I'm gonna be using a, a Sharpie, uh, painting the top of this black and, um, and then basically reducing the area where I don't want the black to be, okay? So the, the idea is that uh, anything you reduce down will not be punching. Anything that uh, will stay highlighted is the thing that will punch onto the metal or whatever it is you're punching it onto. Um, the, the other thing to remember is that when you're actually um, punching an impression onto something that you need to do it in reverse so it shows up the way you want when it's actually on, um, on whatever the material is you're punching onto. So I'm gonna to have to do it in reverse and I'll quickly show you now on this piece of paper uh, my intention so that at least we can be doing this on purpose. Since using this rough piece of paper, I'll, I'll hold this at the same time as I'm drawing it and hopefully that won't make anyone too nauseous. But um, if you've seen the, uh, the Rusty Pearson logo, it, it's something like this. Uh, you've got an R which uh, comes around, has, has these three prongs which I'm not gonna be able to include into this, this design because it's just it's too much detail. Um, it comes down like that, bit of an R like this. So it's something like that and it's also got these pieces that come around the side. Now I'm not too fussed about the bits that are coming around the side like that, but what I do want to do is get this R with a bit of a tail flick. That's uh, ideally what I'm going to be trying to achieve. So it's going to be something, if I can uh, black it out like this. Get that go around like that. Like so, and kick out something like that. So that's what I'm going to try and do uh, on the end of, of this piece here. So um, it's going to be a little bit tricky because there's a little bit of detail there, but uh, ideally that's what I'm going to be trying to achieve with that, that filled in R version there. So if I can do this in reverse, that will be what I'm trying to achieve. So I'll just reverse it. I'll try and reverse it here. Uh, something like this. And got kids yelling in the background at the dog who keeps jumping on them. But in essence, it's going to be something along the line of that. So something like that should be able to get the punch that we actually want. So uh, I'm going to try and apply that to the end of this uh, by removing metal. And if that works out, we'll uh, be able to try it out and punch uh, to see how we how it uh, how it turned out. So two other things we're going to be playing with today: um, uh, this set of uh, mini files, uh, and they're, they're just a cheap set uh, that I got from Bunnings, but they come with a lifetime warranty. I don't know what that means because um, they're pretty much cheap as chips, so I don't know if I'd ever go back. Uh, if, they, if and when they break, and we know when is probably the more likely the case. The other thing too, uh, is I can quickly just show you here. This is a camera setup that I'm gonna be using to get a close view of the, um, of the end of the punch. Uh, it won't be super micro, but it'll be enough so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, this is the camera that I would use if it was not in the workshop, because there's far too much dust and ash down here to be using something like this. That's one of the ones I would use at work. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll lock this in the vise and, uh, and we'll go from there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try and do the back of the R by removing with this flat file. See so if we can dig in just there. This, uh, this project is going to more than test my patience. This is not the sort of thing that I'm good at. 
because it requires a lot of concentration. So it's starting to work with the back of the, uh, the back of the R there. Uh, I will have to reduce some more just at the top here. Uh, I'll play with one of the other files to do that. Just got to be careful because I don't know how much. I should probably like measure out. I'd say it's about exactly halfway where I can cut the R back in. And I won't use that one. I'll use the edge of this to do that. Right about there. Gonna make sure I'm marking out the um, all the areas uh, that sort of like are, uh, are the edge of things I don't want to cut off. So I'll just put the um, edge at the bottom of the R there. Just to make sure I've got a nice clean edge. No, I know it's a little way off, but getting that R, the, the, um, the hollowed area in the centre of the R, I've got no idea how to do that. Um, so I have actually looked, um, and I can see like stuff with Dremels and things like that, and I do have a Dremel, but I've played with the Dremel before trying to use it on this steel, and it's way worse than uh, the results I'm getting with just taking my time with these little files. I think angle is very important. This one I'm using at the moment is kind of like a, um, a wedge shape or like a triangle. So I'm able to get like a square edge and a diagonal at the same time. Just gotta be careful, especially on this side, that I don't move, remove any more material from the top there until I'm ready to get, let it round out. Um, because when I'm cutting in through here, just to make sure I get my pressure on the right, the right side so I'm not cutting backwards into there. There's no more material that can be lost there. It needs to be sort of almost a square edge. I'm just using a round file to um, work on the curve here. It's really quite delicate because it's um, where we get the pointy end of our uh, foot of the R. I'm going to use the sharp end of this tool just to um, sort of slightly engrave it a little and then um, I'll probably get my mallet and actually just tap on the end of these. Now this is different from what Roy did, he actually had an engraving tool that he'd made. So this is different from that. Scratching it like this is actually getting a similar effect. You know, I should take my time digging into it. I might actually try a, um, the mallet head and see if it doesn't wreck this tool. So that centre section seemed to be a bit hard with the, um, the, the centre of the R, for instance. Um, I've engraved around it to give it sort of uh, some depth, but the centre part, rather than just take my time and whittle it all back, um, I'm just going to use this uh, rotary tool, it's a Dremel-like uh, thing. The only problem is it is a cheap one, which means that the, the uh, tools themselves, the bits, um, are not very uh, fine. 
I guess. So I should be okay for this because I've already engraved around the, the area where I want to go in and maybe, you know, it's not quite a mill deep, but it's around about that. Uh, this should be able to get a little bit depth in, in the center. So um, let's give it a go. slip across there, it's not too bad. Um, I might just have to uh, get some sandpaper and, and push that back a little bit uh, because I don't want to start creating some indents where I don't need them. So doing this heat treat, I haven't done it before. Uh, I'm gonna be using uh, oil to, to treat it. It's mystery steel. I, I have no idea whether this is like supposed to be quenched in uh, water or oil or air hardened even, uh, no idea. But I'm gonna do it in oil. Um, I'm gonna use this canola oil and I'm gonna use this little can. Uh, I'll put this into here and then heat this up. And the intention for me is um, to heat it up here, the, fr the front part. Uh, is the part I want to harden. I'm going to actually leave this area soft, ideally. So I'll heat it up, quench it to about there, and then take it out. And, and ideally, if, if it works, uh, we can actually get the temper to come back up from the bottom of the steel. It's getting nice and hot. It's hard to see in the sunlight, but, uh, but it is. <laughs> uh, there's the magnet uh, that I'm going to be using just to make sure that we're at the right temperature for quenching. You know, Non-magnetic. Um, and... Uh, I'll just quickly show you something else. Here's a pair of tongs that I, I made the other day, uh, which I think are a hell of a lot better than anything I've made in the past. And let me show you a picture as to uh, what I did with those, because what I uh, set a piece of rebar, uh, which you can see here, and that's what I used to make sure that these, um, I forgot what the, the bit part here up here is called, but um, made them a lot heavier. And so these are a hell of a lot better than any of the other tongs I've made in the past. And they've got a little, um, let's see here. You see they've got a little area so I can get a little bit of round stock in there as well. But um, yeah, really happy with them. You have to watch this after the, uh, the failed experiments previously. Make sure it doesn't get too hot. Right, definitely not magnetic uh, in the quench. <laughs> Seen it on Fortune Fire, but never done it myself. Right, bit of a file test back here. Still cutting. That's what we want. Uh, up here, you can hear that different sound. It's definitely skating. All right, so I think uh, for all intents and purposes, that is hardened. Now, this is all still hot back here, so I want to see if I can actually get the tempering to happen. Uh, I just might need to uh, sand back one of these edges so I can see what's going on with the colour. All right, so I'll just put that there. Let's see which side there. We want that there. And ideally what should be happening is as that tip uh, heats up, we should start to see straw colours come through here, followed by sort of blues. We want the straw colour to get sort of near the tip uh, and then it will have been tempered. Now, this is all uh, hearsay because I am absolutely no expert in this. Um, this is me just trying something. Uh, don't follow this as a how-to in any shape or form. But um, yeah, because this is the first time I've ever tried to do anything like this. It is seemed to be working uh, how I've seen it in the pictures <laughs> and on the other videos. Uh, but um, this is all trial and error. It's really quite tricky from this angle to see um, what's going on with the colour, but I think you can see there that it's really starting to, uh, the straws coming through to here, we've got blue just there. I think you can, I think you can see that. 
So all we're wanting is the straw to color to get up to the top here, which is just about at, and then we'll re-quench it. Hopefully you can see that. We've got the blue color just there. Straw's up at the tip. Re-quench that. And I'll let the, um, I'll let the, the back of it just uh, cool down on its own so it gets a bit of an anneal character to it. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's come out. Uh, there we are. No, there, yeah. Let's see if we can focus on that. Let's see if I can focus. 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 Oh. Anyway, you can see it's an R. Um, now for the final test, I'm going to uh, punch this into some hot metal and uh, we will see whether this is a success or another failure. I think this will be a success off the back of this being the steel that actually melted when I was trying to make that knife the other day. So, um, success out of failure. Awesome stuff. Alright, so it's rough, uh, and I look a mess again, look at me. Uh, it's, it's always hot in here, it's just in the middle of summer, so uh, it's always warm, and I just turned off the fan so that we can uh, have a chat. Here's the, uh, here's the end result, um, and while it's probably not the cleanest thing in the world, I'm actually pretty happy with the result. There's the, uh, whoop, upside down, there's the uh, touch mark, um, all done by hand, and uh, I guess the, the thing that I've learned from doing this piece is trying to get the, the top here is completely flat as possible. It's a little bit rounded on the edges, which is why I had to um, uh, punch into the steel a number of times because it, uh, it didn't get it on the first go because they're not it's not as even as I would like. But uh, but if I got the metal hotter, I think uh, I think that we would be on a winner with this one. So if you like the video, give us a like. Uh, if you've got some commentary, I would love to hear it. Uh, I am learning absolutely novice blacksmith here, so uh, if you've got some ideas on how I can be doing these things better, then please put them in the comments. Till next time, thank you so much for watching.